trip to Radio mm. Row and the Super Bowl. And we were lucky enough to cover this guy and a couple of them. Former Seahawk linebacker K.J. Wright, the man, the yes, myth, sir. the legend. He is here on Radio Row doing his own show. K.J., yes, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's been really, really fun seeing it from this lens, this angle. Uh, when I played, I was, I was tunnel vision. I didn't, I didn't watch any TV, the fans. I didn't hear any noise. I was really tunnel vision. But to see the excitement, the build up, each day goes by, you feel the intensity become uh, more explosive. And so it's been fun to interview guys, talk to guys. And We had Sean Alexander on, and we were talking to Sean about his memories of the Super Bowl. Bittersweet yeah. because obviously right. those Seahawks teams lost. You're on a team that won and a team that lost. Yeah. I mean, what are your memories of the start? Teams? Which one you want to start with? Let's start with the win. Let's okay, let's see. You, know, <laughs> I, you know what? My best story about the win, uh, you're going to enjoy this. You probably might remember this. We go to the locker room after the game, and Pete says, hey, 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 everybody please calm down. We're going to go through our routine. And it's like a checklist that Pete did. Yeah, right? he and does he, it every game. He does it every game. He mm-hmm. said, we're going to do this. We've done it every game. So he starts going through this checklist. And all you can hear is these old linemen in the back going, no sacks allowed, right? <laughs> and then, like, you know, Pete would go through another thing, and you kept hearing these, no sacks allowed. And then finally when they said no sacks allowed, the entire room <laughs> erupted. That sounds like Breno Giacomini and Russell Ocone leading yeah, that no it, sacks allowed yeah, charge. It, but, I mean, that was just being in that locker room that day, man. It's it was a beautiful day, insane. man. Just, just a beautiful day. <sighs> we talking. So many guys wanted that moment. So many guys as kids, you watch the Super Bowl you dream about playing in it, throwing the back, you know, throwing the football in the backyard, and to get to the game, to get to playing Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos, you got one more team standing in your way, and the way we did it was just dominating fashion, just Seahawks football. Oh, we ran the ball, of boom. and we kicked tail on defense, and so for us to just put our stamp in NFL history as one of the greats, as the best on the planet, it was just a dream come true for us. What made that defense so special? A few things. <laughs> Just, what do you want to start? We only have six to eight minutes, right? Yeah, so. A few things. Um, one thing that I really appreciate about it, about my guys, was the love that we have for one another, the love and the respect and the appreciation for what guys brought to the table. And when you love people, you're going to have some some moments where it's not pretty. It, it could get comfort. It can get ugly at times. But at the end of the day, when we did have our disagreements, when we did have um, disruptive moments. We always came back together. We also had that moment where we communicated, we talked it out. It's all love. Let's go play some ball. You and know, it's interesting you mentioned that. You always hear kind of that analogy where a family and two brothers can fight, but if somebody wants to pick a fight with my brother, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, we got problems. We, we go tag team and we go <laughs> beat your tail. <laughs> and uh, we did just that. Anybody that stepped on the football field going against us, so you talking to junk to, to Sherm, you talking junk to me as well. Yeah, you, you got something to say to Bobby. You you run it by me. As, you run that by me too. And, and you know that was what you talked about the the, the top of the mountain for you guys. Yeah. And um, um, the next one, where you're you can see the top of the mountain. Yeah. And you're literally like you're almost taking your last step and you slip. What are your memories of that? Memories is I remember us getting in shotgun. I remember standing at the fifty yard line. I remember screaming, "Why are we in shotgun?" And it happened so fast. It just happened in a blink of an eye. Like, you, you become stunned. You become numb for a minute. Like, this didn't just happen. This did not occur to us. We did not make this decision. They're, they're not over there celebrating. We should be celebrating. And for that moment to stick with me in February 2024, that's – I don't want to be talking about this. But, <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? We um, – that's the moment we got to live with. That's a decision that Coach Carroll and – everyone else has to live with you make this decision when you choose to do something that everyone on the planet know you should do the total opposite that that stings that sucks and we got to live with that for the rest of our lives you know it's it's crazy because you know you're sitting there talking about how painful it is usually when you talk to athletes who have won and lost that win kind of like kind of eases the sting no yeah for you guys it doesn't seem that way no 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 i i don't i'm some super bowl champion i'm one of the um, what, 50 some teams that has done that. But people talk more about the second one than they do the first one. People don't really talk about the butt when we put on the number one team in NFL history. Mm-hmm. People always ask me, why'd you throw the ball on the one yard line? Yeah. That's what I get most of the time. I don't get you just made Peyton Man look like a uh, JV quarterback. I got, you gave Tom Brady his fourth, fifth round. Uh, I've been in a lot of locker rooms. I've been in locker rooms and teams have lost Stanley Cup games. I've been in locker rooms where teams, Super Bowls, you name it. I don't think I've ever seen a reaction, uh, I swear to God, 
Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas sitting in their lockers like half an hour after the game, still fully dressed, not even moving. They were like in a catatonic state. All they were doing was just staring straight ahead. They couldn't even get to the point where they could take their gear off. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. Hey, enough of that stuff. Let's start positive stuff. Let's yeah. get back on some <laughs> stuff that makes you smile and laugh. Yeah. What's keeping KJ Wright busy these days? Ooh, wife and three kids. Uh, they, they wear me out. And um, Hey, boom. hold on. We had Sean Alexander. He just oh, had his 13th, dude. 13! He's out of his mind, but yeah. more power to him. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, doing the KJ All Day podcast, I got my radio station, Cairo, um, ESPN, in Seattle, launched my foundation, the Right Way Foundation. I'm really passionate about financial literacy, teaching these cool. kids about credit, about compound interest, about a mortgage, all that stuff that's not taught enough in school. I'm hosting my first award show next week, and so just just being pulled in all kinds of directions has been really fun. That's awesome. And, of course, we've got to get your thoughts on the game. The Niners are the better team. The Niners have more talent. The Niners have a bunch of Pro Bowlers, Hall of Famers. The Niners do not have Patrick Mahomes. Oh my God. You wouldn't believe how many people have said the exact same thing this week. It's just Niners, but Patrick Mahomes. It's just And you'll see it. You'll yeah. see it once again. He's going to have his third Super Bowl. Yeah? You He's going to have his third Super Bowl. I know, he, I know he is. It's not even a question. Hey, if people want more information, do you got a website for your foundation, anything like that we can help uh, The promote? Right Way Foundation 50org Please donate money because these kids need it. We have Christmas drive, back-to-school drives. Um, I would really appreciate that. And, yeah, we got big stuff coming this, this off season. taking these kids on trips um, back to school. Like I said, it's going to be really, really fun. And so please support. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to come up to Vancouver one of these days. I know you that's, guys. That's have, my spot. I know you guys have kind of made that's some trips. Spot, I mean, yeah. we're talking about Luke Wilson, of course, yeah. the Canadian connection there. I know he took yeah. a few of the guys up there back uh -huh. in the day. Yeah. But next time you come up, you know, you want to take the wife away for a little getaway weekend, leave the kids at home with the in-laws yeah. or whatever. You, Sound you, like you, a plan. Dial, you dial us up. I will. Take care of you. <laughs> I will. Hey, KJ, thanks for doing Thank this. You appreciate it. Me. Thanks and uh, all the best. Appreciate you.